I'm Leslie McVean. Welcome to A Story to Tell, the first of what I hope will be many stories about people who want to share a little bit about themselves. My first guest today is Monica Rowe Abbott, who lives in St. Croix and has written, among other things, a very moving story about George Floyd. And full disclosure, Monica is married to my former husband. Welcome, Monica. Hello, Monica. Hello, Leslie. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm really, really happy that we're here together today. And um, I wanted people to know that, okay, you live in St. Croix, but you're not from there originally. No. No, and, and tell everyone where you're from. I am originally from the Highland of Jamaica. The Highland of Jamaica? Yes. So what town would that be up there? I was born in the city of Kingston, but I was raised on the eastern slope of Jamaica in the parish of Portland. Well, and I am from Portland as well. Yes. So it's a different, very different Portland. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I know a little bit about Jamaica, having lived there for a while. Yes. And I fell in love with Jamaica and the people and the culture and the food. And um, when you came into our family, it was really a delight uh, because um, you brought some of that feeling that, of, a, of a culture we fell in love with to our family. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I know that um, you lived in the States for a long time, um, and your work is in healthcare. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and um, just uh, how you transitioned into writing or? or... Well, um, it was always been my desire to write. Um, I always um, tell myself that whenever it is convenient, the time is convenient, I would write because I like writing. Although I've never really write a book before, but I used to write letters to the editors. And uh, I also was good at, was very good at writing papers in, in, in college. Oh. I wrote a paper once on chemical dependency in college and um, the professor was so impressed by it that he asked for my authority to, to use my paper in some of his other discussions. Oh, wonderful. Yes, but I've never write books before. But um, I say when I when I, if God spare my life because everything depends on the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So I always say if God spare my life and I get to retire and I live to retire, I am going to write. And that's what you're doing. And that's I just, what I am doing. Before we continue on the writing, I just want to share with everyone this wonderful book that I have, Mondays at 10. And it's the Writer's Circle of St. Croix 2020 Anthology. Now, this is what um, the first I heard of your writing as well. I think the kids knew, but I didn't. Yeah. And um, Tyson shared this with me at Christmas time, and I went right out and ordered a copy. And um, tell us how moving to St. Croix, how you found this group, Mondays at 10, the, the writing group. Well, a few months after I moved to St. Croix, we had to have some work done on our house. So a plumber came here to do some work. And he, this, this plumber was a former NGO. And um, we were talking because he was in Africa for a while, you know. So we were talking and um, about writing. He's also a writer, he and his wife. 
And um, he was the one who told me about this group. And he is a writer with the Caribbean Writers Association here. And he also published things, books and stuff too. So he told me about it and that's how I get to know about it. So um, I went there to see them and I introduced myself. And um, so they gave me something to write. They told me to write something and to send it to them. And I did. And they really like what I did and I was accepted. And that's how I became a member of that group. And the group is, is uh, made up of people from all over the world. Yeah, from diverse backgrounds, people from diverse backgrounds. The leader of the group is um, originally from London, England, but um, our father was in the diplomatic services. And so she has lived in 12 countries. And um, you have me, who is from Jamaica, and Lenny, who is from St. Thomas, that's one of the three sister islands, and um, various other people from the various states in the United States, some of them professional writers. Yeah, it's, it's quite impressive reading about all the people who are in the book. And, and um, you submitted um, stories for the anthology, I think. Um, everybody was asked to submit something if they so desired, I guess. But there were so many submissions. There were 85, I believe. And they chose 50. And four of them are yours. <laughs> Well, I had submitted five originally, and one was disqualified, I think, because of the nature of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a, so, little, a little too much for the, for the group, right? <laughs> I think, for the book. For the book. <laughs> well, it, it was the selectors and, you know, not, you know, the selectors and stuff but anyway um i got four out of five so that's great very good well you know i want to talk a little more about it but i one of the stories in there um is about george floyd yes. and um i read that and i was so moved i mean it really brought me to tears it was it captured so much of what happened that day in yeah. in a, in just a, in this wonderful story and um you chose um to write it in patois yes. do you want to say a little bit about why well i do things by inspiration and this morning um that the morning in question i woke up because I like to write in the mornings, mm -hmm. early, early before, you know, everything get too busy. So I got up and it's like I hear a voice said to me, write, as I was contemplating about what I should write, like I hear a voice clearly write something about George Floyd. So I take up my pad and I start to, you know, scribble. And um, the next thing I heard in my mind was write it in patwa. I said to me, myself, I don't know if these people understand patwa or are going to understand patwa. But anyway, I get the urge to write it in Patwa. So I wrote it in Patwa. So I wrote them and then I started my editing, you know. So my, the leader of the group called me and asked me how everything was going. And I told her, well, I, 
I am inspired to write something about George Floyd. Um, I was thinking about the present climate in the United States at the time. All that was going on, you have, we were, we, we are, and we are still in a pandemic. And um, we also have the election fever, the upcoming election that just went by. And then all these killing of, you know, black men in the United States. So I said, okay, I think I should write this paper because all my life, all my adult life, I, I, as a matter of fact, I was taught from a child, you know, to stand up for what is right. And I ate injustice of any kind. You know, injustice is wrong. So I, I, I didn't like all that was going on with this killing, you know, of black men. And so I decided I have to let my voice be heard. So I called my, the head of the group, my leader, and I said, well, I was inspired to write this, but I wrote it in Patuan. I don't know if people will understand it. And she said, that sounds good, Monica, do it. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, when it was, when I submitted the pieces, the, um, the selectors um, send it back to me and ask me to tone down the patois a little better, you know, so that it is more understandable. So I worked on it and I toned it down and I sent it back. And um, when I received it, they said it was perfect. <laughs> well, I think it is. I don't, you know, I think having it in the patois makes it even more impactful. Yes. And what I would like to do is have you read the story to our viewers because, you know, I, I read it to some friends and I cannot do patois. I did my best, but, but I would love for you to do that now and then we'll talk a little bit after. Okay. Thank you, Monica. You're welcome. Memorial Day 2020. Me wake up this morning with a heavy heart. What me thank God that me still alive. For me brother George Floyd never get the same chance. Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020. George Floyd did very happy if he spend the day with him family. Him got to the shop to buy a cigarette and pay the shopkeeper with a $20 bill. The shopkeeper say money no good. The bill phony and call the police for take action. Four police go to the shop with them gun drawn and handcuffs in a them hand. But they never investigate if they claim they right or wrong. Them anchor fly and throw him on the ground with him face down. One of the four officer, Derek Chauvin, put him knee on fly neck and kept pressing it down. Fly call for him mama, him daughter, and half for him family. Fly beg him, please, please, make him breed. But the more fly plead, the harder Derek Chauvin squeeze. When the pleading stopped, fly take him last breath and couldn't breathe no more. Next thing we know, them pronounce him dead. Not a black man bite the dust. One more notch on Chauvin belt to kill another innocent black man. But fly murder cause big up stir for enough people on the street and in the store. And some of them in a them car and SUVs see the whole thing and record it on them phone. Then push the send button to Facebook, WhatsApp, Face Chat. 
Q Zone, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, and Google too. And in a matter of minute, the old world see what happened. Another black man life soon off out in a cold blood upon the corner of East 38th Street and Chicago Avenue in the city of Minneapolis by the same people who have a duty to serve and protect them. For the first time in the history of America, white people take to the street in a vast numbers and raise them vice against the killing of George Floyd and all the other black people that them kill without a cause against police brutality and the brutality that been unleashed from black people by white supremacists for over 400 years. Night upon night, them demonstrate and protest in every city and state across the whole nation. Them call for an end to police brutality, police racism, and lack of police accountability. All over the world, good white people and good people of every race, color, creed, gender, nationality, and sexuality join hand in hand with black people and march in a solidarity. May applaud everyone all over the world to stand up for what is right. Philosopher Edmund Burke once said, once said, and me quote, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. April 16th, 1963, in a letter, Martin Luther King Jr. write in famous words, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. War, a song by Bob Marley and the Wailers in 1976, it said, until the philosophy which old one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned everywhere is war, Miss war. To ban white is privilege, to ban black is disadvantage. Lord me God, I when this I go stop. The world hate we because of how you make we. We can't escape with skin color no match that of the white supremacy. Everywhere we go, them war for kill we. Them gun we down in every city, state, and every town. If we skin black, are we skin white? Are we skin brown? We can't escape and we can't turn around. We can't understand how human beings can eat one another because of the color of them skin. Something them no have no control over. It be hundreds of years now since them have been lynching, raping, and killing we. Only God Almighty know what make them eat we. Oh, oh, oh Monica. Thank you for reading it. Thank you for writing it. You're um, welcome. It, I think the patois adds, adds a lot to it. It, it just, it's such a, it's such a, a beautiful way of speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's from the heart. It's passionate. It's, it's yes. real. Yes. Um, I, I thank you for writing it. Um, You're and I, I think that, um, I've read your other stories as well, and they're terrific. Um, this one just, I, I, I get shivers through my body hearing it. Um, now the patois is that, I know I, I've heard, I heard an interview um, with someone and that patois isn't the same in every place. It's a little different. Yes, but, um... In the Caribbean on a whole, um, we all speak different dialects, mm -hmm. but we all, we grew up hearing it called Patwa. Now, some people are of the opinion or believe that Patwa is French, the Creole French, you know, the broken down form of uh, French. But, well, in the Caribbean, we all grew up grew up hearing that we, they don't say, well, we speak in dialect. They say we speak Patois. So, you know, to each his own. 
whether whether it's dialect, patu, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. it's wonderful. It is wonderful. And I am glad that I'm able to speak it. Yeah. And you know, growing up, my grandfather would not allow me to speak patwa in the house. Oh. Yeah, because whenever I speak patwa, he said, the, the, the Queen English, please. Oh. That's what he would say. Because, you know, we were from a, we are from a colony of um, England. Right. So I, I was really born a British citizen because, you know, we were colonies of um, England. So, um, and I, I was very upset because I like the dialect or the patois, yeah. but I, I was for, forbidden to speak it. But when I grew up, I understand that in order to find yourself in a good situation, you have to learn English. So when you learn English, yes, you can speak Patwa and you can write Patwa or write in Patwa, you know, because you already knew English. So what he was saying when I grew up, I realized he was trying to tell me the right thing. Yeah. So I, yeah. I understand that and I appreciate it. Yeah. So you're bilingual, really. <laughs> I don't know. I, if, I don't, well, you yeah. know, they, they have translated the Bible in patwa or dialect in oh. they have oh. and yeah i it really it really sounds nice to me when i hear patwa mm -hmm. you know and there are people in jamaica who does not speak patwa yeah if you hear them speak you think you were in london or birmingham <laughs> or somewhere yeah you know? Because whether or not they know it, yeah. I don't know. And they must know it because they born and grew up there, but yeah. or they just don't speak Patwa. Well, they have lovely sayings, too. I remember, um, you know, when, when someone, when people part, uh, the, the term, me soon come. Me soon come. I love that. Yeah. It means I'll come back again. We'll we'll be together it, again. It, it means I am coming soon. Yeah, I love yes. that. Yes. And uh, the other thing that seemed so moving to me is the term a dead yard. When someone a dead died. yard, okay. Yeah, I remember that because we knew someone who had died, you know, the, there was a death and they said, Oh, there's a dead yard. And it yes. just seems to say a lot about a space and a family and, and a community, really. As you mentioned about that, if you have not been to a funeral in Jamaica, you have not seen a funeral. Yeah. It's something to be seen. Yeah, it goes on for a long time. And yes, it go on from the day the person die. And um, you have the nine night, but from that day the person died, every night people gather the nine night which is a nine night after that is the big night mm -hmm. you know lots of cooking and heating and domino playing and this and that and ban now, nowadays it's nowadays that they hire band to sing or music set of you know whatever yeah. but if you have never been to a jamaican funeral you have not seen a funeral well i i haven't um, I did see some recordings of one of your relatives who died, I think, some videos several years back. Okay, I yes. I don't know if one of the kids was there or, but um, it's sort of like in New Orleans or in, in Louisiana where they do the, the, the funerals, because there's a lot of people from the Caribbean who settled there and speak Patois as well. Yes. But I, I wonder if, you know, um your book and um george floyd the story and and our country was was really experiencing a dead yard when that yes. happened and, <laughs> i agree um, with you um uh, we need and i think the 
the, the funeral celebration is the people taking to the streets. Yes, yes. Um, I, I just find it, what you wrote, just so, so meaningful. And um, I think we're going to probably say goodbye now. Um, okay. You soon come. Uh, I hope yeah. that you will come here soon and maybe when you do, when this is, virus is all over, because we share grandchildren, so yes. you will come here, um, that maybe we could have a reading. Um, yes. Some people it would be lovely. Yes. Yes. And, I, and I look forward to reading more of your writings and your group. They're all so talented. Oh, they're, it's a very, very talented group of people. Yeah. And um, very nice because, you know, when I, when I look into it, um, we have two blacks in the group and everybody is treated the same. Yeah. There's no difference. So, you know, that's something I appreciate, you know. It makes a difference that when people look at you for who you are, not yeah. the color of oh, your skin oh, or skin. your race or your uh, yes. your gender preference, you know. Uh, it, it you know, it's it's why we're all the same. We all yeah. have blood and bones and hearts and uh, it's, I don't know, I, I think your story hopefully will remind people of that. And thank yeah. you, Monica, for being on this first show of A Story to Tell, and, and we all have a story to tell, and I hope other people will share theirs with me as you have. Yes, thank you, Leslie, and I appreciate it, and you have a wonderful day. You too, in the sunshine. We've got a little 11 degrees here, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you can go outside. All you, de do, all you have to do is put on some warm clothes. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the clothes you wear, not the weather, right? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, and you have a wonderful day. You too.